Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ashish Shawat and welcome to Grid Up. Uh, I'll be discussing with you a series of lectures in reinforced cement concrete. In the earlier lectures, earlier two lectures, we have discussed about the introduction and basic concepts of reinforced cement concrete. And in this and the following lecture, we'll be discussing about the working stress method. Now there have been uh, various design philosophies for the design of uh, reinforced cement concrete. Some of them are working stress method, uh, ultimate load method and limit strain method. Now the working stress method and ultimate load method uh, are old methods which have been uh, in use for, for many decades now and uh, they have become quite outdated these days uh, keeping from economy point of view. While the limit state method is a refined version of working stress method and ultimate load method uh, which, is in, which is quite prevalent today. It is used very prevalently today and uh, it incorporates all the good aspects of uh, working stress method and ultimate load method. So uh, we will start with the lecture today. It is for working stress method and uh, it is divided into two parts, part 1 and part 2. Today we will be discussing part 1 and in the following uh, coming lecture we will be discussing the part 2. So first. Now, introduction to working stress method. So, uh, there are some points mentioned here. As you can see, the working stress method of design makes use of working or service loads. Now, what are service loads? Service loads are the actual loads which are coming on the structure. If any st uh, there is any structure and certain loads are coming onto it, now those actual loads are known as service or working loads. So, working stress method makes use of those working loads. Now, stresses in concrete and steel are not allowed to exceed some specified value by applying factor of safety. Now in working stress method, uh, the stresses which are coming onto the uh, concrete and steel, uh, we do not allow them to go beyond a certain value. And this is done by applying a proper factor of safety for concrete as well as steel. Now for example, you can see uh, for concrete in bending compression, uh, in bending compression, the permissible stress of grade M20 is 7 Newton per mm square. Uh, this figure you have already seen in the lecture two, uh, which I have uh, lecture three, sorry, which I have taught, and which is obtained by dividing the characteristic strength 20 newton per mm square by three. Okay. Now in working stress method, the design load is characteristic load. Okay. So the uh, whatever load is coming onto the uh, structure here, it is the characteristic load. Now moving on. Now the assumptions which are used for design in working stress method. Now there are certain assumptions which have to be taken in uh, in the design philosophy uh, which makes the, uh, the analysis very easy for us and it makes the design uh, steps easier. Okay. So first is, uh, now the first assumption, this is, first assumption is also known as Bernoulli's assumption. Bernoulli assumption. Okay. So the first assumption is Bernoulli's assumption. It states that the plane section before bending remain, remains plane even after bending. So this cross section of a beam, the, of a rectangular beam, which is plane before bending, after the application of the load and subsequent bending, the section remains plane. Okay, this is the first assumption here. <coughs> so second assumption states that, uh, we will come to the second assumption. All tensile stresses in ta is taken by reinforcement only and none by the concrete. Now, working in working stress method, this is the neutral axis we are seeing. This is a cross section of a rectangular beam. This is the neutral axis. So this portion, uh, this is for the sagging moment. Okay. So this portion is in compression and this portion in tension. Okay. So this basically this second assumption states that we consider a cracked section in concrete. Okay, in WSM, the analysis is done by considering a cracked section. So here, the concrete in compression will be taking the compressive load, while the concrete in tension portion, this portion of concrete will not take part in uh, resisting the tensile uh, the tensile stresses. Okay, so the entire tensile stress is taken by the steel, which is located somewhere at this portion. Okay, so this portion is not at all effective in resisting any load. All tensile stress is taken by reinforcement only. Okay, so moving to the third assumption here, it states that the stress-strain relationship of steel and concrete under working loads 
is a straight line. So basically, this assumption, what this assumption does, it simplifies the analysis of the, this is the uh, somewhat the stress strain diagram. Okay. So what this assumption does, it simplifies the stress strain behavior of the concrete and steel. So the analysis and the design portion becomes easy. Okay. So uh, the final and the fourth assumption is the modular ratio M should be considered as M is equals to 280 by 3 sigma CBC. Okay. So this is in uh, this is the stress coming in concrete in bending compression. Okay. So modular ratio is 280 by 3 sigma CBC. Now there is a note mentioned here. You can see there. The modular ratio M partially considers the long term effect of creep. Okay. So, uh, some in some uh, questions you can you will see objective question on this particular point uh, for partial compensation or full compensation for creep. Okay, so it only takes the partial compensation for creep. Now, M is e ES upon EC. This is modulus of elasticity of steel to the modulus of elasticity of concrete. Now, there is a table given over here. Uh, it gives the relation between the uh, different gates of concrete. Uh, for sigma CBC and M. Okay, so for sigma CBC for M15 grade, the sigma CBC value is 5, and the modular ratio will be 280 by 3. It will be 280 by 3 into 5. That somewhere comes out to be 18.67. For similarly for M20 grade concrete, the sigma CBC value is uh, 7, and uh, M value is 13.33. For M25. 8.5 and M is 10.98 and for M30 grade concrete the sigma CBC value is 10 and M is 9.33. Now these three are the most prevalently used grades of concrete. So uh, I'll suggest you to remember these these three values of the modular ratio which will come very handy in solving the questions of working stress method be it for analysis and for design. Okay. So moving to the next slide here. Now coming to the actual analysis of singly reinforced beam section. Now what is a singly reinforced beam? Singly reinforced beam is simply, a, this is a rectangular beam and there is steel over here. Somewhere on the, uh, some cover is provided here and here steel is provided. This is a singly reinforced beam. Now other type is a doubly reinforced be beam which, will, uh, which we will study in the next lecture. Okay. So coming to the analysis here, <coughs> the first analysis is the actual depth of uh, this, the steps are, uh, the first step is to determine the actual depth of neutral axis XA. Now as you can see here, this is the cross section of a rectangular beam, okay, and this is a known as a transformed cross section, okay. So this is the actual cross section of a uh, rectangular beam with uh, steel. This is AST. These uh, bars are the uh, tensile steel, and this is the transformed cross section of the beam in which the concrete in tension has been neglected. As we are uh, doing the analysis by considering cracked section. Okay. So uh, to in order to obtain the actual neutral axis depth, uh, we'll equate the moment of area on both sides of neutral axis. Okay. So on this side of the axis, on the compression side of the axis and on the tension side of the axis will equate the moment of area. It is done here as you can see. So this is B here, okay, yes. So B into this is XA into XA by 2 as the, the center of gravity will be located here, okay. So this is XA by 2, okay, is equals to M into AST. M into AST is the transformed area of steel. Okay. So M into AST into this distance. This distance is nothing but B minus XA. Okay. So the expression becomes B into XA into XA by 2 is equals to M into AST D minus XA. Okay. This is the stress diagram which we will come in the some moment okay so from from this expression th this expression you will get the actual neutral axis depth xa okay now moving to the second step we'll obtain the critical depth of neutral axis xc 
okay so in at critical condition the stress in outermost concrete fiber becomes sigma cbc and in steel becomes sigma st okay as you can see here this is the diagram okay this is the stress diagram so at uh, critical condition the stress at topmost compression fiber will become sigma uh, sigma cbc and the stress in steel will become sigma st okay so in terms of uh, modular so if you incorporate the modular ratio here then it will be in terms of concrete sigma st by m okay so from the stress diagram as you can see from this diagram here okay so sigma cbc by xa by the properties of similar triangles okay is equals to sigma st by m upon d minus xc okay so after doing the adequate steps as you can see here this it becomes d by xc is equals to t plus mc upon mc is equals to k where m is the modular ratio c is the uh, sigma cbc value and t is the sigma st value okay so xc becomes kd okay x is equals to kd where k is this value 93.33 upon t plus 93.33 d okay so for uh, different purpose uh, different steels different values of k have been defined uh, they have been uh, calculated okay so for fe 250 as we know the sigma st value is 140 so k value becomes 0.4 for fe 415 the sigma st value becomes 230 and the k value becomes 2.289 and for FE 500, the sigma ST value is 275 and K value is 0.253. Okay. So, XC value for this becomes 0.4D, 0.289D and 0.253D. Okay. So, these three are the values for the crit uh, lim uh, limiting critical nuclear neutral axis. Sorry. So, these three are the critical neutral axis values. Okay. So, now the next step becomes the uh, defining the type of the section. So comparison of XC and XC will define the type of section here. Okay. So if the uh, actual neutral axis depth is less than the critical neutral axis depth, XC is less than XC, then the section is under reinforced. Then that section is known as the under reinforced section. Okay. So in that case, the uh, stress value in the outermost compression fiber will be less than sigma CBC, while the steel will which will reach its yield and ta will become equal to sigma st now for the balanced section balanced cross section if x, uh, the xa will be equal to xc the actual neutral axis depth will be equal to the critical neutral axis depth now in that case the uh, outermost compression uh, fiber of concrete will have sigma uh, ca is equal to sigma cbc while ta will be equal to sigma st now, third case is if the actual neutral axis depth is greater than the critical neutral axis depth, then the then that section is over reinforced. Okay, so this is the over reinforced section. So CA will be equal to sigma CBC and TA will be equal to will be less than sigma ST. Now, few points are to be mentioned here. The under reinforced section. This is the best section. Now, why is why is it best? Because it it has a ductile failure in this there will be pre-warning pre-warning before failure okay now balance section this is used for the design purposes in uh, while designing design of beams by WSM we will use balanced section okay and over enforced this is not recommended, not recommended to be provided anywhere, okay, because this has a brittle failure. It fails suddenly. Now, why it fails suddenly? Because the concrete has reached its limiting permissible stress, while steel has not reached its permissible stress. So, concrete being a brittle material, the failure will be uh, brittle in nature it will fail suddenly leaving to a lo loss of life and uh, other damages okay so this is uh, in this way we have defined the type of section here now coming to the uh, other steps now third step is the total resultant force now total compressive force uh, c is b into xa into ca okay b into xa is the cross section area and ca is the stress now total tensile force t is equals to 
TA into AST. Now, directly from the level of steel, TA into AST, uh, the tensile force will come. Now, the next step is lever arm. Lever arm, it is the distance between C and T in the section, between the compressive force and the tensile force, whatever the, be the distance between the resultant compressive force and the tensile force. Now, that is the lever arm. Now, lever arm here will be D, D minus XA by 3. Okay. So, the next step is the moment of resistance. Now, ultimately calculating the uh, moment of resistance of the section MR. Now, for under reinforced section, MR is equal to B into XA into CA by 2 into D minus XA by 3. Here, uh, this force will be by 2. Okay. Because uh, the stress distribution is triangular. Here it is CA. Okay. Here it is XA. And this is defined for the for B width of the cross section. Okay. So, it will be this, this thing. Now, MR balanced is B into XA into CA by 2 into D minus XA by 3 or sigma ST into AST D minus XA by 3. Okay. For balanced section, MR is B into XA into sigma CBC by 2 into D minus XA by 3 or from tension side, MR is equal to sigma ST into AST D minus XA by 3. Now, similarly for over reinforced section, MR, uh, the moment of resistance is P into XA into sigma CVC by 2 into D minus XA by 3 or MR is equal to TA into AST into D minus XA by 3 from the tension side. Now, you can see here for under reinforced section, we have used CA here. While for balanced it is sigma CVC and for over reinforced it is sigma CVC. Okay. So, this depends, uh, these values have been uh, obtained after defining the type of section. So, if the section will be under reinforced, this will be CA. If it is balanced or over reinforced, the CA will be replaced by sigma CVC. Now, uh, similarly from tension side you can see, uh, in under reinforced we have uh, written sigma ST, we will be using sigma ST. In balance also we are using sigma ST, while in over reinforced we are using TA because steel has not yielded yet. It has not re reached its, its permissible stress here. Okay. So, from the type of section, we will get these two values. Okay. So, this is about the analysis of uh, WSM, a singly reinforced section by WSM. Now, as you all know, we, whatever analysis we have done uh, till now, it is as per the cracked section. Now, for uncracked section, we will see some uh, content here. Now, if the maximum tensile stress developed in concrete at the bottom most section, this is the rectangular section at this level, this, okay. So, at this level, the, if the maximum tensile stress developed in concrete is less than bending tensile, this, if this stress is less than FCR value, then the section is considered as uncracked. Okay. So, at this level, the stress in concrete, the bottom most fiber, if the stress is, uh, the tensile stress is less than the uh, bending tensile strength of concrete, then the section is considered as uncracked. Okay. Now, coming to the analysis here. Okay. So, this is B, this is D, this is AST. Okay. So, it will be convenient for all of you to uh, refer these, these letters. Okay. So, concrete area is B into D. The concrete area is B into D. Equivalent concrete area at steel location is M into AST as we have already done in the analysis portion. Now, total equivalent area will be B into D plus M minus 1 into AST. So, minus 1 is done to remove that AST and replace it with equivalent concrete. Okay. Now, depth of neutral axis from top surface. Now, from top the y bar is B into D, in, uh, D into D by 2 plus M minus 1 into AST into this is located at a depth small d, effective depth from top into D divided by the area, the equivalent area. Okay. So, by this expression, you will get the depth of neutral axis from top. Now, equivalent moment of inertia. Now, uh, equivalent moment of inertia I equivalent is equals to BD cube by 12, as you all know, uh, for rectangular section, the um, um, moment of inertia is BD cube by 12, plus B into D into Y bar minus D by 2 ka whole square. Okay. So, this is not uh, 
we'll use the parallel axis theorem here. The, here, this is the expression for parallel axis theorem. Okay, plus m minus one into n plus pi by four into phi by uh, four. This is the dia of the tens uh, dia of steel. Okay, plus a s t into d minus y bar ka whole square. This is also using the parallel axis theorem. So by this expression, we'll get the equivalent moment of inertia. Okay. Now uh, continuing with this. Now the stresses. Now stresses at top and bottom will be calculating. Now at top, F1 will be equal to m upon I equivalent into y bar. Now we are using here it is uh, the flexure formula as we all know. M upon I is equals to sigma upon y is equals to e by r. So we are using the flexure formula here. So m upon I equivalent into y t will give the uh, top uh, the stress at top F1 and at bottom. M upon I equivalent into d minus y t. This will give the stress at bottom. Now, if the uh, if F t is less than F c r, then the section is considered as uncracked. Okay, stress at bottom. Okay, if F three is uh, greater than F c r, then the section is considered as great as cracked. Okay, so for cracked, uh, we have already done this analysis, and this is for the uncracked. Now the cracking moment. What is the cracking moment? Now the value of moment for which the maximum tensile stress in concrete at bottommost fiber becomes just more than the flexural tensile strength of concrete. Now, if the stress at bottom, F bottom, just becomes equal to F C R, now corresponding to this stress value, F C R will get the cracking moment, M C R. So with this expression, we can calculate. The cracking moment. Okay. Now uh, coming to a question here, we'll be solving this question here uh, here only. Okay. So uh, we are given with a rectangular bar. The width is 500. Overall depth is 800. Okay. And the effective cover given over here is 60 mm. So The effective depth will be 800 minus 60. That is 740 mm. Okay. Now AST, the steel given is 425. Okay. So four bars of 20 mm diameter here. So we'll calculate the AST here. It comes somewhere on 1257 mm square. Okay. Also following two. Things are given M30 grade concrete and Fe415. So, first step is to calculate the actual neutral axis depth. Okay. So, the recalling the formula here, B into Xa into Xa by 2 is equals to M into Ast into D minus Xa. Okay. So, by putting the values here, 500 into Xa square by 2. Is equals to um, m value. M is uh, for m 30 grade concrete. It is 9.33 into 1257 into d is 740 minus x a. Now I am solving this. You will get the value 164.3 mm. Okay. So this is the actual depth of neutral axis. Okay. Now coming to the second step here. B, the critical neutral axis depth. Okay, so X C we all know it is equals to K D. Okay, and uh, for F E four one five, the X C is point two eight nine D. So that is equals to point two eight nine into uh, effective depth is seven forty. So this comes out to two zero three point eight mm. Okay, so this is the uh, critical neutral axis depth. Now compare X A and X C value. Now, as we can see, X A is less than X C. So what this implies that the section is under reinforced. Okay, it is an under reinforced section. So therefore, for under reinforced section, C A will be less than sigma C B C and T A will be equal to sigma S T. Okay, so it will be convenient for us to use this for calculating the moment of resistance. Okay, so in the 
third and the final step calculating the moment of resistance here it will be sigma s t into a s t into d minus x a by 3 ok. Now sigma s t for F E 415 is 230 into 1257 we have uh, obtained we have already calculated this value the value of tensile steel into 740 minus x a is 164.3 divided by 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 to calculate in kilo Newton meters ok. So after solving this you will get 198.05 kilo Newton meter ok. So this is the basic these are the basic steps which are to be followed in every question and it, are, it is to be remembered for every question. No matter the easy you will get easy questions or hard questions you can by following these steps you can easily solve the questions related to the analysis of singly reinforced beam using working stress method ok. So this was all about the working stress method part 1 in the coming lecture we will be discussing about the doubly reinforced beam uh, analysis of doubly reinforced beam by working stress method. Thank you and have a very good day.